Hello friends, in this video we'll be taking a look at the autosomal DNA results, predicted phenotype traits and even GD match results of an Iron Age Tartesian woman from Spain. This is where she is from. Uh, in terms of the time period that she lived in, it looks like she lived in uh, the 7th to 5th century before the Common Era, so 7 to 5 centuries before uh, the birth of Christ. Uh, in terms of her mitochondrial DNA, her mitochondrial lineage is J, J, it's J, right? J1C. All right, her mitochondrial lineage is J1C. Now we can move on to her results. I think we should start with the ethnicity and... Um, for the ethnicity, I'm going to show you her results with trait predictor and then GED match. So with trait predictor, this is what she scores. Keep in mind that this result was based on 197 SNPs. Uh, the SNP count is displayed here on top to sort of show you how reliable the prediction is. Uh, unfortunately, a prediction based on 197 SNPs is not going to be very good. Uh, but if you look at this prediction, she is closest to 11th Chalcolithic KRD Telcordo individual from, from Turkey. Uh, Chalcolithic Anatolian farmer or whatever. And followed by that is Chimera mercenaries from the from the Caucasus, Caucasian Chimera mercenaries, BMAC, Egyptian Preptolemaic mummy. So clearly there is um it's a very Middle Eastern result. It's not a European looking result. It looks uh very, you know, Middle Eastern, uh Anatolian, Egyptian, uh maybe Jewish even. Uh, maybe Natufian, maybe Algerian. So all the closest populations here are populations of the Middle East. And it's not quite what you see with GED match. So with GED match, when you look at the sample, it is clearly a European. It is a sample that's scoring 46% North Atlantic. That's a European component. Uh, it doesn't score much Baltic. There isn't much of this Baltic or Northeast European you know, affinities. That's not really present here. But there is plenty of North Atlantic. There is plenty of West Mediterranean. And these are European components. It's a European sample. Um, is there any North African admixture? Maybe. Uh, because this individual is scoring 3.03 Red Sea, which is kind of a North African component to score. North Africans tend to score a lot of it. Uh, it's also a Middle Eastern component to score. Uh, there is a lot of East Mediterranean, which North Africans also do score. There is a little bit of North East African, but I wouldn't say that it's particularly out of line for... Uh, what's typical for average person from Spain today? Probably not from the southernmost point of Spain, though. No. Uh, and what I'm talking about, you can see it's closest to f French Basque, Spanish from Aragon, Southwest French. So if it was a Spanish person, if if you will find a Spanish person today with a similar uh, Eurogenes K13 score, it's probably going to be somebody from the north of Spain or northeast of Spain and not from um, this region in the very south of Spain, because there actually isn't enough of the North African ancestry. There isn't enough of the North African components here. Uh, this person is mostly getting modeled as a mixture of French, Basque, Basque French, plus various North Africans, um, which is kind of interesting. There is also French, Basque, plus Algerian, Jewish, uh, various Jewish groups as well. There is uh, Basque from France, plus Samaritans, which are uh, indigenous people of Israel. Jordanians, East Sicilians. So yeah, there is a uh, there is a Middle Eastern component that's present here, and it's a Middle Eastern component that you will see with uh, it's it's very over exaggerated with my trade predictor. Uh, the trade predictor is basically saying this individual is pretty much one hundred percent Middle Eastern, whereas in the case of GED match, um, it, this individual is mostly a Mediterranean with a little bit of Middle Eastern like admixture. Um, now we're going to move on to her phenotype, what she looked like. So let's open up Nashakot. And for the phenotype, it looks like she's got hazel eyes, definitely very uh, hazel eye color. There is a pretty high likelihood of brown eyes and the green and blue with amber center. So that's also possible, not really probable, but possible. Uh, for darkest brown eyes or blue eyes, that's not really possible. That's not really uh, a, a possibility here. So most likely she's got some kind of intermediate or hazel-like color like this picture that I included here um, in the result. For hair color, it looks like she's got dark brown hair, although light brown hair is also possible. And technically, uh, dark blonde hair is even possible. 9% is kind of a, a, a moderately big possibility. Most likely she's got dark brown hair. For skin color, she most likely has olive or Mediterranean skin tone, although light brown skin is also possible. Most likely, though, her skin tone is olive or Mediterranean. 
um, olive colored. For hair texture, it looks like she's got wavy hair or maybe straight hair. Curly hair is also a possibility. Uh, when you see a result like this, when there is 30% likelihood of straight and, and then 4% likelihood of kinky, it means that there wasn't enough data in the file to make a more concrete prediction because what you want to see is 0% kinky, 35% straight, something like that. Uh, you want to see a more concrete prediction. And when you have a lot of data in the file, you will see a more concrete prediction. In this case, we're seeing something that's uh, indicative of the file not being very high quality. For coloring related variants found in the file, it looks like she, it's actually very surprising that she's scoring what she is. Um, this is just like a very messed up result. It's very difficult to interpret because she does not have blue haplotype 1. Although I will, there is a nuance here. This is not um, the variation that's actually most, um, logically speaking, most um, most likely to be the uh, like the header mutation for blue eye haplotype 1. I actually find some other um, variations in OCA2 region to be better predictors of blue eye haplotype 1 than this variation in HERC2. And they are both here, it's these two. So we don't really know uh, her genotype in these variations, and we can't, and uh, because of that, because of that, we don't really know if she has blue eye haplotype 1. Uh, this variation in HERC2 seems to be quite, uh, quite a good candidate for blue eye haplotype 1 as well. But um, I think, I think in this case, I think these two are the better candidates. So if you just look at uh, her genotype here, it looks like she does not have blue eye haplotype one. Although there is some nuances there, uh, she probably does, and she has a blue eye haplotype four, which is really uncommon. Um, it's really uncommon. You don't really see people with two derived variants in this variation, like ever. Uh, it is most common in the Mediterranean region and. Um, precisely in the Basque country, country and in the Caucasus. Um, blue eye haplotype 4 is quite common there. Uh, but in Europe, uh, north of, say, southern France, it's not really found. Which is And it's very interesting that she has two light, uh, two light color variants here. It's kind of really surprising. She also has two light color variants in this variation of HERC2, which is predictive of blue eye haplotype 2. Now, unlike, uh, unlike the situation here, um, there is a there is kind of a weak linkage between this variation in HERC2 and these two in OCA2. There is kind of a weak linkage there. In, in, in contrast, the linkage between these two variations is super strong. Actually, between these three is super strong. Wait, I closed it by accident. Yeah. Between these, these three variations, the linkage is super strong. They're located right next to each other. Uh, so based on her genotype here, we can pretty much assume that she has blue eye haplotype 2. She has GG here. Even though it's not on the file, we can do the, the logical imputation of her genotype here. But it's just interesting that she has to draft variants in, in BH4. I mean, it's so surprising. You don't see it uh, very often. It's super rare. Uh, okay, so it looks like she has to draft variants in this variation of SLC24A5. So she got the um, Eurasian uh, pale skin mutation. She has two light color variants in these variations of, variations of SLC45A2. Once again, lighter color of hair, skin, and eyes. Um, is there anything interesting? No. She does not have the European hunter-gatherer red hair, um, blue eyes, and pale skin variants in IRF4. Um, it looks like she's got two draft variants in this variation of TIRP1, so she probably has two draft variants in all of the other variations here as well. Unfortunately, she's not uh, genotyped for anything in the Kito G region, which is kind of a bummer. Uh, I wanted to discuss something here. Do you see how many of these variants have, you know, not determined genotypes, 999 for the genotyping? Uh, it's it's just, it's it really shows you that it's not a very high quality file. And for MC1R, notice for MC1R, she's only got one genotype out of the um, I think it's, I think it's six total that it looks for. So only one out of six for MC1R was found, uh, which is a really big travesty, um, a tragedy that it's such a low quality sample. But I gotta make a video on it. People ask me to. Uh, so it looks like she does not have the advantage in this variation of MC1R. Nothing too interesting in this result, actually, aside from her having two derived variants in this variation of OCA2. Um, uh, aside from her having two derived variants in BEH4, there is nothing too interesting here. All right, now we're going to move on to her uh, diseases and traits. We're going to start with the polygenic risk scores. So it looks like she's got a below average score for schizophrenia. 
She's got a below average, pretty much average score for type 2 diabetes. Now, I wouldn't say below average. And she's got a below average score for Alzheimer's. And she's got a slightly below average score for multiple sclerosis as well. Nothing is surprising or concerning here for cancer section. Zero risk variance for breast cancer out of four. Really good to see. Four risk variance for, risk variance for testicular cancer out of eight. Uh, it's not a very high quality file. Once again, if it was a if it was a better file, you would see a lot more variance in total. Uh, four out of eight for testicular cancer sounds really um, typical. Two risk variance for celiac disease out of four, which is pretty pretty uncommon. Okay, but then again, it's out of four, so it's not the most reliable result. Zero for GSS out of zero. Okay, so nothing. Relevant for Gerstmann, Strauss, or Scheinker syndrome was found in the file at all. Uh, four risk variance for Crohn's out of eight, which is pretty uncommon as well. Uh, but then again, it's only out of eight. Uh, zero for Reifenstein's out of zero. So nothing for Reifenstein's was found in the file. Zero for Parkinson's out of six. Uh, once again, very little stuff was found in the Parkinson's. So far, I don't see anything that is concerning, but we're going to explore uh, the monogenic traits now. And we're, we're going to maybe, maybe find something concerning here. So it looks like she's got Gigi in Comte's Val Met variation, meaning Val Val genotype or Warrior genotype. She's got Warrior genotype in Comte, which means she's got higher activity of the Comte enzyme. Uh, Comte enzyme is the enzyme that breaks down dopamine, and therefore she's got quicker breakdown of dopamine, less dopamine in the system. Uh, the implications of this is that she has advantages in stress resilience, but disadvantages in attention, and motiv uh, attention tasks and motivation. She's got this genotype in MAOA. Uh, which actually means that she's got a uh, warrior genotype in MAOA. So these two are conflicting genotypes. Her genotype in Comte is warrior. Her genotype in MAOA is warrior. Uh, these conflict with each other, and they kind of cancel out. Uh, at least the way I uh, the, the way I think it works is they cancel each other out, and you would end up having pretty much intermediate speed of dopamine reuptake. Um, it looks like she's got this variation of DRD2, GG genotype in this variation of DRD2 meaning less dopamine due to receptor sites and decreased risk of schizophrenia. So if, if it was a higher quality file, we would probably see here that she has two derived no-go learner variants because this variation is pretty closely linked to the no-go learner variation. So she probably has two derived no-go learner variants for this, uh, for, for DRD2. She does not have the A1 allele and TAC1. Once again, typical genotype for... Um, for pretty much everybody. That's not a monkey or a Neanderthal or... Uh, some kind of like chimp or something. Because um, most humans have GG here. Most humans have um, A2, A2 genotype. And the, a the A1 allele seems to be predominant in uh, Neanderthals and monkeys and apes and various non-humans. I'm not sure why that is. Uh, the A1 allele basically significantly decreases the number of dopamine to receptor sites in the brain and it increases the like likelihood of certain stuff like uh, ADHD and alcoholism and Parkinson's in humans. I'm not sure what it leads to in uh, monkeys or apes, but it looks like this individual does not have the A1 allele, which is good for her. Uh, and for men we're going to skip autism, we're going to skip DDC. Lactose persistence, it looks like she does not carry the European lactose persistence mutation. This individual does not have the European lactose persistence mutation. If she took an ancestry test, they would say, hey, you're lactose intolerant. Uh, for OXTR, the empathy gene, it looks like she's got this genotype in this variation of OXTR, which is associated with decreased OXTR expression and kind of like sociopathy, but most people, the T allele here is the most common allele, so it's not like she falls in, in this tiny group of people who are sociopaths, it's just that she falls into the wider, uh, the large group of people, uh, the majority of people who don't have increased empathy, that's really what it means. Um, but she has this genotype in OXTR, in, in this variation of OXTR, uh, two variants for higher levels of empathy in this OXTR variation, most likely not East Asian. Unfortunately, the most important variation that um, my trait predictor looks for is not found in this file, so I can't really... Usually, I just go by the genotype in the most important variation, but sometimes, as in this case, when it's absent from the file, I have to go and discuss the other genotypes. <laughs> for diabetes, it looks like she does not have type 1 diabetes. Really good to see hemochromatosis. Nothing was found here. Uh, for Alzheimer's, it looks like she's got no APOE2 alleles. Okay, she, she does not have risk variance in APOE. Really good to see. APOE is by far the most important gene for uh, Alzheimer's prediction and Alzheimer's risk scores, multiple sclerosis, nothing was found. Um, cardiovascular disease, interesting. So she she seems to have a reduced risk of various coronary heart diseases and, and uh, heart disease in general. Uh, all three genotypes that are found here and shown on the screen have um, connotations of reduced risk of coronary heart disease. 
for myopia, it looks like she's got this genotype, which is typical. Most people have the same genotype here. Most people have AA here. Uh, some Europeans have the G allele, which actually greatly reduces the risk of myopia, but that's not the case for her. She does have these uh, genotypes, which reduce the risk of myopia, which is really good to see. She does not have micropenis. That's the miscellaneous section. Uh, she got better performing muscles. She's likely more sprinter rather than an endurance athlete. That's also very interesting. She does not have variants for increased pain, sensit pain sensitivity in this variation of SCN9A, which is once again super interesting. Uh, and she does not have shovel shaped incisors, and she's not East Asian in ancestry based on her genotype here in EZAR. All right. Uh, we're going to skip drug response. Nothing is interesting here. Uh, albinism, nothing's found. Familiar intranial fever, nothing was found. MTHFR, nothing was found in the file. You see, it's a low, it's a low quality file. Uh, for cancer section, she's got this genotype, which leads to a slightly higher risk of testicular cancer, but nothing important aside from this was found in the file. Leukemia, nothing found in the file. Rare diseases, nothing found in the file. Celiac disease, it looks like she's got two risk variants in this variation. So okay, okay, this may be a little bit concerning that she has um, two risk variants here. It's it's one of those variations where. I think risk variants aren't very common. For allergies panel, it looks like she's got this genotype, which is to three times higher risk of de developing a peanut allergy. All right. For androgen receptor gene, it looks like she's got the genotype here, uh, which leads to higher odds of boldness. It isn't that she has a higher odds of boldness. It's that she does not have the allele that protects from going bold. That's the way you should interpret it. For Crohn's disease panel, it looks like she's got significantly higher risk of Crohn's disease. That's very interesting. I remember the Crohn's score was pretty high as well. So I was curious how many of those uh, risk variants were important. So it looks like at least one of those risk, risk variants that she has is important. Actually, two, because she's uh, homozygous here. So two of the risk variants she has are important. For Canavan syndrome panel, uh, it looks like she does not have any risk variants for that. For HIV and AIDS panel... She does not have protective variants in this uh, in this variation uh, that protect from HIV. Uh, HIV turns into AIDS at a different pace in different humans. In some people, depending on their biology, it can turn into AIDS in a couple months. In some people, it can take decades. So in her case, she does not have the protective variants that reduce viral load and prolong uh, sort of um, the incubation period of um, AIDS, you could say. So she most likely falls in the group of people that um, uh, that um, experience this incubation period being very short. Uh, same as most people, I mean, I have the same genotype. It's it's only a European thing. Uh, uh, the protective variants here are are pretty much a European thing. Europeans tend to be the ones who have protective variants that sort of protect from uh, HIV. For muscular dystrophy myopathies, it looks like she does not have any risk variants for that. Uh, zero risk variance for ADL out of zero total. Once again, nothing relevant for that was found in the file, unfortunately. And for color blindness, uh, you can see for these genes, nothing was found in the file at all. And for this gene, zero risk variance out of two. All right. That's pretty much all there is to this genome. Thanks for watching my video until the end. Uh, leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. And you can download this file in 23andMe format from link which is in the description of the video. Goodbye.